When you look at cells in three dimensions, as opposed to the two-dimensional images that traditionally people have obtained with electron microscopy, you, you start to discover new things. Every cell you look at has some new features. And I think that's what makes the techniques we work on quite exciting, because you have always the ability to discover new things. Our lab of cellular and supramolecular structure and function is unique at the NIH in having a background in uh, physics of electron scattering, which allows us to develop more sensitive techniques for studying cellular structure. And in the case of the pancreatic islets of Langerhans, the beta cells, which are the most numerous cells in those microorgans, are the ones that produce insulin. And we discovered that we could see very clearly the immature secretory granules of proinsulin. We discovered that we could quantify the amount of proinsulin granules in these cells. So I think the technique sort of links the function to the structures in a way that hadn't been done before because we, we were looking at entire cells rather than just random cuts through these insulin-containing cells. One of the projects that I've been working on recently and sort of completed recently is uh, the project on erythropoiesis. And the question was, as the cells develop from the stem cell, towards the red blood cell. What happens in between in terms of the iron accumulation? We decided to take these cells to the 3D and sort of image what happens to their structural evolution as they go from like a regular looking cell to a red blood cell. We found that these lysosomes were surrounded by the mitochondria at one pole of the cell and the whole exchange of the iron is going from the lysosomes to the mitochondria where heme is produced. And basically it was just a beautiful study of structure function relationship, which you need to do in three dimensions because you can't tell what happens in 2D. The 3D electron microscope in our lab relies on using fixatives together with heavy metals to staining cells and the tissues that are embedded in plastic. Sometimes we also use high pressure freezing method to preserve the ultra structure for high resolution studies. We've been working recently on platelets and in doing this, we have a joint collaboration then with Richard Liepman's lab at the NIH and with the advances in 3D volume imaging using new technology, we were able to image the entire thrombus that forms, that is, the platelet aggregate that actually stops bleeding. And we were able to do that in 3D. And we've moved on now to trying to handle the problem of occlusive clots, those things which form in arteries and what are the real risk factor in terms of stroke or myocardial infarction. There's two projects our lab is working on that I'm a part of. The first is a project with COVID blood samples. And the other project that we're working on is on occlusive blood clots and uh, examining the structure of the blood clot as to where red blood cells are within it, how tightly packed the platelets are and so on. The serial block phase SEM is one of the techniques that we use here. It essentially just images a sample and then with a tiny diamond blade, scrapes off a layer, images the layer underneath and keeps doing that until we get a 3D representation of our sample. And then we take that over to our software where we analyze the data and we segment it and are able to generate 3D models. Right now, I am looking at platelet morphology for COVID-19 patients. And so that requires me to work on a focused ion beam scanning electron microscope, which is different because I use ions to slice off a sample and use an SEM to image, while in traditional SEMs uses an actual knife. The beauty of this device is I get higher resolution images compared to other modalities of SEM. When I look at the FIB SEM, I can get a Z resolution of close to three to five nanometers. What I mostly work on is some of the image analysis stuff for the electron microscopy images that we take in the lab. 
to use deep learning neural networks for three-dimensional image segmentation, specifically to automatically segment the alpha granules of COVID-19 patients' blood platelets. Deep learning is really valuable for this because it's a type of machine learning that is really focused on pattern recognition, and so it can be used to detect objects within an image. And so this allows you to automatically segment complex shapes uh, very quickly and automatically rather than having to do it by hand. And so it drastically speeds up how much we can segment. One project that we are beginning to work on is to look at the architecture and organization of liver, which is a complicated tissue in terms of the blood vessels and how nutrients are taken you know, from the blood, going to be stored in, in, in the liver and then come back out again. The future is sort of trying to develop the best resolution we can get, but also the idea to combine techniques together to obtain information that was not previously possible to obtain.